So it looks like it's a pretty big 40k release week this week. We've got the new expansion, a new sisters miniature, a brand new combat patrol unveiled, and all the battle forces and the new codex for Imperial agents. So let's take a look at what we've got. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, where it seems that Games Workshop is moving rapidly on with their codex release schedule after not having news for a little while. Looks like there won't be all that long a gap between the actual preview and teasers of the Imperial Agents Codex and them actually coming out. We got all the news and reveals of their codexes and battle forces coming out a couple of weeks back now, and now they're going on for pre-order this weekend on Saturday. Seems that's not all though, as there's a few other things that were previewed for 40k, and they're also going to be making an appearance, and I thought that one of the most interesting things about this announcement was a brand new combat patrol. So basically a discount deal for Imperial agents that will stick around after these battle forces have gone away. So here's the total of the 40k releases this week. It's really quite a lot of stuff. For the Imperial agents themselves, we've got the Codex plus the limited edition version as well. I'm certainly looking forward to seeing a few more rules previews. We'll be fun to see if any of the characters do unusual things like this new navigator, plus the various auto detachments, and find out what's happening to the Death Watch. Then we've got the three Ordo Battle Forces that we'll go over briefly in this, the Ordo Hereticus, the Ordo Xenos, and the Ordo Malleus. These will be one and done Battle Forces, so basically Games Workshop makes a certain amount of them and then they'll go away, and we don't know whether or not they'll make enough for how many people want at this point. Then we've got the new Combat Patrol for Imperial Agents. This one seems to be largely focused on the Adeptus Arbites. I was expecting Navy Breachers, so that's something a little bit different. And it seems that the expected character releases for things coming out individually with the Blackstone Fortress miniatures and Captain Artemis are all coming out this week. It looks like the only follow-up character release that they'll need is Inquisitor Kotias himself, who's going to be coming out in the Battle Force box, and then we'll get an individual release at a later date. Finally for them, there's also the return of a bunch of characters that have basically been taken down for repackaging, Greyfax and Kyriadraxus and the Assassins. We did expect they were going to be coming back, though it does look like the fine cast ones might be gone. Then for other Warhammer 40k stuff, we've got the Boarding Actions book coming out, the expansion for 40k but indoors, read on for 10th edition. Seems like this one is going to be a pretty massive tome with 55 different boarding patrol detachments there and a whole ton of missions. The Celestian Sacrosanct Avalyn miniature, the rather awesome Flame Bearing Sisters miniature, and she's going to be coming out alongside her Demon Breaker book by Jude Reed, and she's a Black Library exclusive. Basically all of this will be going live on Saturday the 10th of August, and then the 24th of August will be the full release in stores, where you can pick things up physically rather than pre-ordering online. As ever, if you did want to pick these up at a discount, I've got plenty of discount retailers links down in the video description, channel affiliates where a small amount of the profits goes to help support all specs tactics as well, Element Games in the UK for 15% off, Wargame Portal in the USA also for 15% off, Gap Games in Australia for 21% off, and Fenris Workshop in Canada for 10% off. For these ones, the pre-orders will be going live at midnight Eastern Time in Wargame Portal and Fenris Workshop, 10am in the UK and midday Australian Eastern Time in Gap Games. Individual shops might have low supply of certain items, though I'd guess that most of this won't sell out absolutely immediately. I guess that's always a dangerous thing to assume though for the Battle Forces. i say if you want one of the Ordo Battle Forces, that's probably the thing that you'd need to rush on most. I suspect there'd be at least okay supply of most of the rest. In any case, a big thank you to any of you folks picking up things through those links. It does help to support the channel. Starting out though, one of the things I was most interested to see were the contents of the new Combat Patrol for the Imperial Agents. This will be £100, $168 or €130, Euros. and basically they had quite a lot of options with this one, depending on what combination of agents plus retinues they wanted to stick in the box. It seems that this one is essentially going to be the Adeptus Arbites box, if you want a whole load of guys to dispense some Imperial Justice. Quite nice recent Lawbringer miniatures. They can be assembled either as the shotgun toting vigilators, as you can see here, or the riot shield subductors, or the exaction squad, which is essentially shotguns plus a whole bunch of fancy weapon upgrades. Beyond them, they've got the Ministorum Priest with the Zealots Vindicta, which looks like they'll be able to join the Inquisitorial Henchman Warband in the Agents Index. That one's the Blackstone Fortress miniature that came back in the Sisters one. There's the Slaughter Maniac that is a Stim Crazed Eversaw assassin, and then one of those Kill Team Henchman Retinue bands, where the models are really quite customizable, but you do only get six on the box unless you stretch the kit with a few more extra legs, which isn't the hardest to do. 
Looks like at current time of recording, the points will be around about 405 points, though it could change big in the codex after all. At least on paper, the theoretical discount is a bit better than the average 10th edition Combat Patrol, around about 36% off. Seems there's approximately $260 in the box, so a little bit better than most Combat Patrols for most factions. I feel like for the Imperial Agents, the box sets are going to feel a little bit arbitrary with a bunch of models kind of smashed together. Their individual squads and rescues are more supposed to be standalone kill team type affairs, and they don't have a massive amount linking them visually, but I still think it's kind of cool and it maybe appeals to a certain type of collector. I'm still perhaps a bit apprehensive as to how the faction is going to work in terms of big profiles to take down big tough vehicles and things. Games Workshop have kind of shown that minor armies like this often aren't given proper support with that, like the Crute, but basically in this box set it doesn't really look like there's anything that would do significant damage to tanks, vehicles, or 2 plus saves, so I guess they might be really hoping that Death Watch kill teams can carry them for that. In any case, good to know the identity of this one, now people can weigh this up against the big Ordo battle forces if they think that this more suits their purposes. Otherwise, we've got Codex Imperial Agents, which will be $60, £37, or €47.50. There's both the regular cover one and the fancy limited edition one that will cost you significantly more. And then there's the datasheet cards, where you get those handy visual references, but you don't get the detachments in the ones that aren't aimed at the indexes. In the Codex, there's four different detachments, as we know. One for each of the major Ordos, plus an Imperialist Fleet one, where they basically have a damage buff as their core rule. That sounds like it's aimed to be the one that has a little bit of everything. I'd guess that the Ordo ones are going to be quite keyword locked, maybe doing things like supporting their militant wings like the Death Watch for the Xenos one. Again, I'm still really interested to see how they work. I really hope they actually manage to make them strong as an army in their own right, while still keeping them balanced as allies, which might not necessarily be the easiest task to manage both well. In this preview article, there's 27 data sheets, and here's my rough guess as to how they might fold out. We know we've got a new one for a Navigator and a Ministorum Priest, plus an Inquisitorial Chimera. We've got four Assassins, Rogue Traders and their Voidsmen at Arms data sheet, five Inquisitors, including Inquisitor Karamazov is gone, the Henchman Warband, three types of Arbites, plus Navy Breachers, and then for Death Watcher to be the Death Watch Veterans, the Corvus Black Star, Captain Artemis, and the Watchmaster. If that's right, then that will be 23 out of the 27, so I'd guess the last four might be the Combat Patrol data sheets. I have made a few assumptions with basically all different sections of that though, so it could be a bit different, and I guess not impossible that the last four could be the Death Watch Primaris mixed kill teams, though I'd guess that's unlikely, we still don't know at time of recording. In any case, really looking forward to a few more rules previews over the week. I'll certainly cover anything that Games Workshop shares online, and also cover the Codex in four once we get the rules for it. Next up, we've got the three Ordo Battle Forces, Perhaps going surprisingly heavy for this, for essentially the Imperial Allies type faction, where most other factions launching only got the one battle force set, besides Chaos who got two. The theme to the three different branches of the Inquisition, the Xenos for the Aliens, the Hereticus for the Witches and the Traitors, and the Ordo Malleus for the Demons, each having a named Inquisitor to lead them, and then having one squad of their militant wing for a little bit of extra damage dealing. Again, at time of recording, final pricing isn't known, though it shouldn't be long until that leaks out. I suspect it'll be £135, €175, Euros, or $215. That's been the pricing on the other Battle Force sets that were the equivalents of this that they did since the price rise, though we'll wait and see whether it could be a bit better or a bit worse. I'll certainly make a follow-up video at some point in the week to confirm that one way or the other. For supply of these, they might be in short supply, as the 40k Battle Forces often are. I don't know how great demand will be for these, I feel like it could be a little bit shakier than some of the other major factions out there. I feel like for a lot of people, they just feel like they're kind of low value as sort of random collections of units, but on the other hand, I feel like that does have a bit of a fun factor as well. Getting a whole load of inquisitorial squads and retinues that you could throw into another imperial army, for example, as well as maybe fielding them on their own merits. This one's the Xenos one, led by Kyria Draxus, a henchman warband, one of those new navigators, the miniature from Blackstone Fortress, the rogue trader kill team box with the command section and the voidsmen, a Corvus Black Star, and five Death Watch veterans. The discount on this one looks like it's around about a 34% if we do assume that previous price. It looks like it shakes out to around about three points per dollar, which isn't awful as 40k goes. And it does look like this one is the most in demand one out of the Battle Force box sets and the one that more people are looking to pick up. Then we've got the Order Hereticus one, two handsome witches. 
They're led by Greyfax with her nice condemnor bolt gun crossbow thing. Again, a henchman warband, a ministerium priest, but this one is the Taddeus the Purifier miniature with his sort of bishop's hat type thing. A sister battle squad, which I'd guess wouldn't have their data sheet within the codex, be it failed them as per the Adeptus Auroritas one, and also an immolator. This one adds up to around about 36% discount in theory land, so that's kind of similar really, though it does have a few less points in the box and more like 525. Finally, we've got Ordo Malleus, who's headed up by New Cotias, certainly one of Games Workshop's more roughly received new miniatures there. People not liking his armour, not liking his posing, and not liking his slightly awkwardly posed Cyber Eagle. A bit of a swing and miss overall, even if he isn't absolutely universally hated, but definitely has one of the lowest approval ratings of any new release. He's joined by not one, but two Inquisitorial henchmen bands, and then a Chimera to transport them all in. Then one squad of Grey Knight Terminators to do a bit of demon hunting, a Klexus Assassin to get in the way of any psychers around there, and then again that Ministorum Priest with Zealot's Vindictor, the one that was released alongside the Sisters of Battle. In theory, this one looks like it's got the single best discount at around about 38%, though there's not really that much in it, around about 610 points in the box, though it is kind of character heavy compared with the rest. It looks like this one, despite the inclusion of new Cotias, or perhaps because of that, is perhaps the least in demand. A few people are a little bit apprehensive that the Grey Knights might get a model update at some point, might be this edition, but not necessarily, could be the next one potentially. Lastly, for the agents at least, we've got three different individual character releases. Watch Captain Artemis, he's returning after being range rotated for a long time to be a core part of the Death Watch range again. The Imperial Navigator, that was a Blackstone Fortress miniature, and we don't know exactly what they're going to do as a support character kind of role. I sort of wonder whether they might be one of the ones that interferes with reserves and things, but hopefully they do something fun. I'd guess they'd be joining the Henchman Warband. Then we've got Taddeus the Purifier, the Ministorum Priest with the Power Maul and holding his book aloft. Really quite a fun miniature, though I feel like if it mirrors the Sisters option, then the one with the Zealots Vindictor is going to be kind of superior to him rules-wise, just being a bit more dangerous, but otherwise the same sort of supporting rules. Finally, we've got all of these miniatures that are getting a reboxing. They just quietly removed the Assassins, Kyriadraxus, and Greyfax. They're all returning to full sail once more, as I think everyone was expecting that they would be. There's notably no mention of the fine cast models that were removed, unfortunately. The Standard Inquisitor, the Joe Kiro Weaponsmith, the Demon Host, and Karamazov. I really wouldn't be too surprised if those miniatures just are quietly retired as so many fine cast has been in 10th edition. I guess we'll know more if we see the contents page of the codex or whenever we get the full rules release. Otherwise, beyond the Imperial Agents, we've both got a big rulebook and also Celestian Sacrosanct Avalon. The Boarding Actions rulebook has a few more details on the Sunday preview article. This one genuinely looks like it's a full self-contained expansion to the game in really quite a big tome. 296 pages worth of book, and it basically contains the updated 10th edition version of the boarding action rules, the one where you play 40k but indoors in the sort of Space Hulk terrain, close confines fighting with interesting line of sight rules, and generally it is a kind of niche following, but lots of people really enjoy it. The 9th edition rules were generally quite well received, but people were pretty critical of the port it got to 10th edition, which just removed a lot of good stuff. So it is kind of nice to see Games Workshop take a new take on it and give it the attention it deserves, even if there is a bit of a barrier to entry and actually having the terrain or converting some. In any case, it looks like the book's got lots of content, 55 boarding actions detachments, all factions besides knights represented there. These ones look a little bit more flexible than some of the ones in the past, though kind of interestingly split the units of a bunch of factions kind of in half, with them being able to field certain units but not others in the roster. Then for the faction-specific content, there's tactical manoeuvres, stratagems, and enhancements, and a whole bunch of missions, including ones that are sort of balanced match symmetric ones, asymmetric ones where you have different goals, narrative ones, and multiplayer ones where you can have, say, three people fighting over the same map. In the past, they gave us an example of the Gene Stealer Cult ones. They've got at least two detachments in the Cult Unveiled and the Gene Spawn Onslaught. The Cult Unveiled, in general, is a sort of horde type one with a bunch of acolytes and neophytes, and the Gene Spawn Onslaught are aberrants and metamorphs, so a bit more close combat and sort of mass melee sort of options. I guess they'll have their own supporting rules and the different stratagems and things, so it could be quite a different way to play. Finally, we've got a pretty cool miniature in Celestian Sacrosanct Avalyn, one of the character miniatures to tie in with a Demon Breaker book by Jude Reed. 
possible pricing somewhere around £28, €35 Euros or $45 Dollars if previous Black Library releases are to be believed. And in general, she was seen as a pretty popular buy for a lot of Sisters players. Those are cool details on the miniature, such as the flaming burst that makes the Sisters fleur de lis type symbol, her little cool cherub attendants trailing some parchment, and just quite a fun and dramatic pose. Could be good to stand in for a Caroness, would be how I'd probably run her. Maybe a Palatine for a bit of fight if you wanted. She'll be a limited release miniature, so won't be around forever. Similar releases were like that Orc of Tack Blackhawk war boss, who was around for a bit and then went away, and unfortunately won't have a full data sheet in the codex or anything like that, though might get some Legends rules. Overall, some pretty exciting stuff for Warhammer 40k. Let me know what you make of the boxes, do you like them or dislike them, and how much interest you have for the Imperial Agents rules, if any. I feel like they are maybe a bit divisive, some people being super into them, and other people just really not being bothered. As mentioned, if you were picking up anything at the weekend, there's links down in the video description to get it a bit cheaper and help support the channel. Finally, while we're on the subject of Battle Forces and things, I'd just like to mention that the channel September giveaway will be for 8 people to win either an Ordo Battle Force or the Blood Angels army set, the ones of your choosing. So it could be one way for some people to get some inquisitorial goodness in their force if they wanted. This one follows all the normal rules for the channel giveaways, such as the Knights one, which is shortly to be announced. I'll be announcing the Knight Household one in the very next video, so stay tuned for that. But otherwise, for this one, there's two equal ways to enter, both links down in the video description. Either you can support the channel on Patreon for any amount, which gets you automatic entry each month, all the active patrons' names are exported and put into the random number generator, and it is also the main thing that helps support the channel. Otherwise, you can help the channel on social media and boost the algorithms for completely free entry. To do that, you subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page, and once you've done that, you enter the draw on Facebook on the post on the 1st of September. A giveaway post appears at midnight, and reply to that post with a photo of any 40k mini or imagery, along with your name and the date handwritten within the same photo. That bit's just to deter Facebook bots and spammers. Then, when all of that's done, I do the draw, put all the Facebook and the Patreon entries into the random number generator equally, pick out the winners, and announce them on the YouTube channel update on the 4th of September, ask which boxes you'd like, and then post them out when my orders of them come in. In any case, if you're interested in entering for those, the links are down in the video description, and it's always fun to post out some big boxes to folks. In any case, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I do tend to post new videos most days, and I'm looking forward to reviewing the Imperial Agents Codex when we have the full rules. There's plenty of other benefits to the channel's Patreon page, as per normal. You do get the automatic giveaway entries, but you also get to see certain videos early, get certain other things like names in the credits, Discord roles, and votes to see what comes next. So feel free to check that out in the video description down below if you'd like. In any case, though, an enormous thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.